Welcome to a new daily top ask credit video. Today's topic. What famous person has done something incredibly heinous, but has often been overlooked? Steven Tyler got custody of his 14-year-old girlfriend so she could go on tour with Aerosmith and be together. Her parents consented. Oh it gets even tilde tilde better tilde tilde worse. She got pregnant when she was 16. According to her, it was a planned pregnancy. He told her he wanted to start a family and propose. Then he changed his mind and forced her to get an abortion. After the abortion, they found out it had been a boy, and suddenly Tyler felt guilty about it because he'd always wanted a son. Years later, he began speaking out against abortion, lying that it was an accidental pregnancy and that the GF had been pregnant and gotten an abortion before. The GF was forced to speak out in defense of herself. Now, he's reinvented himself to be a champion for neglected and abused teenage girls. He opened a shelter called Janie's House. It would be one thing if he admitted to his crimes and was doing this as a way to try to make up for it, but nope. He fancies himself a guardian angel to vulnerable girls without ever acknowledging that he himself abused a vulnerable girl. Edit, as other commenters have mentioned, y'all should look into Elvis, he similarly met Priscilla at 14 and took guardianship of her at 16. Edit 2 to clarify things being brought up in comments. Regarding Tyler and the abortion, she was five months pregnant, one week shy of the legal cutoff for an abortion. They didn't find out the sex because of the abortion, he likely just didn't know the sex, or didn't care enough to even process it, until after. Regarding Elvis, please don't defend him by saying they didn't have sex until she was 18. According to Priscilla they did everything short of penetrative sex. That's still sexual acts with a minor. The only reason they didn't have penetrative sex was because he was obsessed with her purity and therefore virginity. He admitted he lost interest in her once she got pregnant, at 18, because he couldn't see a pregnant woman as pure. There are plenty of other cases of famous musicians having full-blown relationships with young girls. Ted Nugent also adopted his GF, Jerry Lee Lewis married his 13-year-old cousin. U forward slash decaf has a good list below of some of the worst examples. Edit again. To correct the original comment, Tyler's GF was 16 when they began dating, not 14. To you guys chiming in with well actually phobophilia isn't the same as pedophilia there you go. What's funny is as I read this, I am listening to Todd Rugger who kinda had to become a dad after Steve and Tyler didn't want to be Liv's dad. Todd Rugger is awesome is basically my point. E colon I have never had a comment blow up here. Better yet the responses are many fans of Runt. Wow that's some real nasty shit. When you're a celebrity, they let you do it. John Travolta refused to give his son his prescribed epilepsy meds because Scientology doesn't believe in mental illnesses and as a result the son died. Is a neurological disorder like epilepsy even considered a mental illness? Holy shit, L. Ron. His son was also autistic. In my opinion denying him the epilepsy meds was an attempt to kill him. There's rumors that they used to lock Jet away from the rest of the family. Carl Malone, ex-NBA player, impregnated a 13-year-old girl while he was 20 in college. Did not have a relationship with the kid. It's worse. She gave birth at 13 which means in all likelihood she was 12 when he tilde tilde had sex with tilde tilde raped her. Edit, raped. This is called rape. His son Demetrius later grew up to play in the NFL wiki article. I lived in Rusto, Louisiana for a time. The same town he lives in and a lot of people in town have stories about how much of a miserable asshole he is. Guess he could never get over not being able to beat MJ. Boy George, man handcuffed an escort to a wall and beat them with a metal chain. This is what I was going to come in and add. It goes beyond that, too he had the guy chained to the wall and was about to sexually torture him with objects, but the guy managed to break free and escape. This wasn't rough play, it was attempted straight up gacy shit. He was just incompetent at it and got a slap on the wrist. The fella used to work I'm my local pub, he was a nice guy. Horrible thing to happen to him. Marcos Alonso from Chelsea killed a 19 year old while drunk driving and got off with a 61,000 euros fine. His salary per week is 110,000 euros. Don't drink and drive. Also don't get into a car when you know the driver is drunk. Friends don't let friends drive drunk. Most people remember Rick James for his catchy funky music, 
his erratic drug issues, or the hilarious Chappell's show Charlie Murphy True Hollywood Stories skit. What people don't bring up as commonly. In 1991, James and his girlfriend Tanya Hijazi were accused of holding 24-year-old Frances Alley hostage for up to six days, tying her up, forcing her to perform sexual acts, and burning her legs and abdomen with the hot end of a crack cocaine pipe during a week-long cocaine binge. He faced life in prison for kidnapping, assault, and torture but only received a five-year sentence and ultimately served two years total. I feel like that was a pretty heinous series of acts that have been often overlooked over the past 30 years. I've been on a binge watching In Living Color, they actually did a sketch on this. They have quite a few sketches about topical things from the early IATs that would never be on network TV today. I was on a plane once with Will Huiato and he just sat there with his headphones on watching a movie. He did try to entertain all the other passengers with his witty banter and regale us with stories from Star Trek. Nothing. Just sat there in silence and politely stood up when the lady on the window seat needed to go to the bathroom. That sick fuck. If that doesn't deserve a shut up, Wesley, I don't know what does. Steven Siegel is a serial rapist and a fraud, I recommend the Behind the Bastards podcast episode about him. When I was training in Aikido in the Iotes, the head of our style was Shihafu Myo Toyoda. He would come to do seminars like twice a year and we all would go out to eat and he would tell us stories. Well Shiha was the person that Siegel got his first Dan from. Shiha told us when he was in Chicago to film his first movie he took Shiha out for dinner. We were told Siegel was so full of himself that Shiha considered him an asshole. It takes a special kind of person to make an ass of yourself in front of your CZ. As a person in the film industry, it is well known that Steven Siegel also beats the living shit out of stunt guys for real. In the movie Under Siege, he TKOs like four guys, throwing them into the wall, and kept saying get me another one. I got from that. He is not a good person. If it helps, I just read Siegel's page and apparently when he was a stunt coordinator for Out for Justice, he claimed his Aikido training made him immune to being choked unconscious. Well one Stutma, Jean LaBelle, took him up on that. Not only did Siegel lose consciousness, but he also shit his pants. Then he tried to call LaBelle a call liar, Rhoda Rousey, who was trained by LaBelle, reportedly declared if, Siegel, says anything bad about Jean to my face, I'd make him crap his pants a second time. Literally anything Chris Brown has ever done fits here. Police report regarding Chris Brown and Rihanna. Christopher Brown and Robin F. Rihanna, have been involved in a dating relationship for approx one and a half years. On Sunday, February 8, 2009 at 0025 hours, Brown was driving a vehicle with Robin F. as the front passenger on an unknown street in Los Angeles. Robin F. picked up Brown's cellular telephone and observed a three-page text message from a woman who Brown had a previous sexual relationship with. A verbal argument ensued and Brown pulled the vehicle over on an unknown street, reached over Robin F. with his right hand, opened the car door and attempted to force her out. Brown was unable to force Robin F. out of the vehicle because she was wearing a seat belt. When he could not force her to exit he took his right hand and shoved her head against the passenger window of the vehicle causing an approximate one inch raised circular contusion. Robin F. turned to face Brown and he punched her in the left eye with his right hand. He then drove away in the vehicle and continued to punch her in the face with his right hand while steering the vehicle with his left hand. The assault caused Robin F.'s mouth to fill with blood and blood to splatter all over her clothing and the interior of the vehicle. Brown looked at Robin F. and stated, I am going to beat the shit out of you when we get home. You wait and see. Robin F. picked her cellular telephone and called her personal assistant, Jennifer Rosales at, redacted. Rosales did not answer the telephone but while her voicemail greeting was playing, Robin F. pretended to talk to her and stated, I'm on my way home. Make sure the cops are there when I get there. This statement was made while the greeting was playing and was not captured as a message. After Robin F. faked the call, Brown and looked at her and stated, You just did the stupidest thing ever. Now I'm really going to kill you. Brown resumed punching Robin F. and she interlocked her fingers behind her head and brought her elbows forward to protect her face. She then bent over at the waist, placing her elbows and face near her lap in attempt to protect her face and head from the barrage of punches being levied upon her by Brown. Brown continued to punch Robin F. on her left arm and hand causing her to suffer a contusion on her left triceps that was approximately 2 inches in diameter and numerous contusions on her left hand. 
Robin F. then attempted to send a text message to her other personal assistant, Melissa Ford. Brown snatched the cellular telephone out of her hand and threw it out of the window onto an unknown street. Brown continued driving and Robin F. observed his cellular phone sitting in his lap. She picked up the cellular telephone with her left hand and before she could make a call he placed her in a headlock with his right hand and continued to drive the vehicle with his left hand. Brown pulled Robin F. close to him and bit her on her left ear. She was able to feel the vehicle swerving from right to left as Brown sped away. He stopped the vehicle in front of, redacted, and Robin F. turned off the car, removed the key from the ignition and sat on it. Brown did not know what she did with the key and began punching her in the face and arms. He then placed her in a headlock positioning the front of her throat between his bicep and forearm. Brown began applying pressure to Robin F's. Left and right carotid arteries causing her to be unable to breathe and she began to lose consciousness. She reached up with her left hand and began attempting to gauge his eyes in an attempt to free herself. Brown bit her left ring and middle fingers and then released her. While Brown continued to punch her, she turned around and placed her back against the passenger door. She brought her knees to her chest, placed her feet against Brown's body and began pushing him away. Brown continued to punch her on the legs and feet causing several contusions. Robin F. began screaming for help and Brown exited the vehicle and walked away. A resident in the neighborhood heard Robin F.'s plea for help and called 911, causing a police response. An investigation was conducted and Robin F. was issued a Domestic Violence Emergency Protective Order, EPO. Jesus, I knew he beat her up, but I've never known it was that extensive. Honestly, why is this not higher? What he did to Rihanna was absolutely horrendous and yet people act like it was no biggie.